give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. Nachi free. I'd like to dedicate this video to all the new subscribers to my YouTube channel. Welcome and thank you. And I'd especially like to thank the patrons supporting me on Patreon. A special cloud nine of appreciation. I cannot thank you enough. You're right, Scully. Let me not forget to thank the very YouTubers who have helped me connect with these 600 plus new subscribers in this year alone. Guys like Failure Accomplished, Billy Bond, Hellbound Heathen, Styx Hex and Hammer 666, The Ogre, and The Britisher. I want to specifically thank these YouTubers for having invited me on their live streams or having given me shout outs that have significantly boosted my subscriber count. So thank you guys and thank you new subscribers and patrons and I hope to make your time worthwhile by providing you with intellectually stimulating substantive social commentary, particularly the kind that can help solve our problems in society. And if there's one problem I'd like to solve is the criminally overpriced healthcare system here in the United States. Now I noticed many of the new subscribers don't live here in the United States, which I love because it's so much fun to communicate with people all around the world. But don't worry, there's something in it for you too, because no healthcare system anywhere in the world is perfect. And if there's anything we could learn from trying to fix the United States healthcare system, maybe it could be applied to your country and vice versa. And also don't worry, not all my videos are gonna be about the healthcare system, okay? Because I know I'll lose all the new subscribers and even the old ones. <laughs> But I would love to do this as a social experiment by making it a recurring series of videos where we touch on the subject and share information from time to time, but most importantly, hash out solutions for it. And I'm curious to see how far we can get without the help of government. And I think we could like to begin with what I think is the biggest problem with healthcare in this country, which is the waste, fraud, and abuse that goes on within the system. And they don't all mean the same thing. Not all waste is fraud and not all abuse is waste. Though I guess you could say all fraud is wasteful and abusive, but fraud is in a category all on its own. Let me explain by beginning with waste. Medicare and Medicaid are two of the biggest examples. The act of giving away expensive medications and supplies no one really needs, particularly pharmaceutical drugs bought in bulk, which our government doesn't even bargain for, and the amount of needless tests that are done to avoid lawsuits. Those are a massive drain on our healthcare, especially the lawsuits. By the way, we also need tort reform and not just in healthcare, but let me not get sidetracked. But the problem with calling this problem out within Medicare and Medicaid is that these programs are designed to help the elderly and the poor, so no one, no one wants to criticize them and end up looking like a heartless monster. Especially none of the virtue signaling hypocrites in the mainstream media. And here's an example. And that is before we even get into Medicaid the program that largely provides health care to poor and disabled Americans, because that is where this bill gets really vicious. And you know the changes to Medicaid are rough, just from how creepily enthusiastic Paul Ryan sounds talking about them. Let me just describe exactly what this bill does for conservatives. This is why I'm so excited about it, and this is why I think people need to see the forest through the trees. We are de-federalizing an entitlement, block granting it back to the states, and capping its growth rate. That's never been done before. He is rock hard talking about that. <laughs> Somehow you can actually hear his erection during that. <laughs> and if you don't know what he's talking about, that just sounds like a benign pile of words. But when he says defederalizing, block granting and capping, what that means in layman's terms is cutting the living shit out of Medicaid. Oh, John Oliver, you virtue signaling twat. We get it, you care about the poor, but what you don't seem to care about is the bigger picture, you economically misguided fucking asshole. And that bigger picture increases the cost of everybody's healthcare, almost to the tune of $700 a month. While guys like you earn millions of dollars on TV, the rest of us have our cost of living increased every time you want to play the hero by advocating policies that ultimately jack up the price of everything for everybody. And insofar as I can tell, Paul Ryan isn't trying to fuck over the poor, you misinforming class warfare perpetuating prick. It's not simply about tax cuts for the rich. <laughs> You're right, Scully. <laughs> Let me relax on John Oliver. I actually used to like him and The Daily Show until they all started propagating false narratives about racism, sexism, and corporatism just to make themselves look virtuous as they got paid generously by major corporations. 
Look, I don't give a shit about defending Paul Ryan and much less the rich like you. But this demonizing of anyone trying to contain costs within healthcare, particularly within Medicare and Medicaid, doesn't help solve the problem either. I've dealt with both of those programs. It doesn't make me an expert, but I've seen the waste and the fraud and the abuse firsthand. Especially living here in Florida where so much Medicare fraud is committed many times in conjunction with the very patients who are in on it too. In my humblissimo opinion, the waste, fraud, and abuse needs to be addressed first and foremost. The fraud alone consumes about $250 billion a year and that's fraud that's been caught. That's not including all the crime that people do get away with or all the waste that doesn't get accounted for and much less the abuse. And speaking of abuse, here's a perfect example that is neither fraudulent nor wasteful, it's just abusive. Earlier this year in Alabama, a couple was charged close to $200,000 for the birth of their daughter who was born prematurely with lung issues. And they got stuck with that bill because their insurance company refuses to pay for it since they didn't correctly switch policies or properly report the pregnancy. I've linked the story below and you can judge for yourself. And even if this is fake news, there are many true cases like these happening every year in the United States. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a John Oliver, Bernie Sanders, moral style crusade about healthcare being a right. Yeah, that's real easy to say when you don't actually work in the healthcare industry. By the way, healthcare already is a right in this country, but that doesn't mean you're entitled to other people's time and resources. However, for an insurance company to withhold payment because of fine printed details, and then for a hospital to charge $180,000 for treatment, there's something clearly wrong there. And I don't even mean morally speaking, I'm talking about just logistics. Does it truly cost $180,000 to give birth to a child even if they are premature with lung issues? Aren't these procedures already systemized by now in hospitals across the country? And I wonder how much of that $180,000 is just a bunch of vague, indecipherable line items written up by lawyers along with $75 ibuprofen pills. And let's assume that the $180,000 is the true cost of payment. Let's say the child was in the hospital for a month in intensive care. You're going to tell me an insurance company that more than likely has annual profits well into the tens of millions of dollars cannot possibly honor its duty to one of its own customers over some fine printed details backed up by a different group of unconscionably opportunistic lawyers. Technically speaking, that's not fraud, that's not waste, but it sounds like abuse. And I'm positive if we can do a better job of getting a handle on the waste, fraud, and abuse. Not to mention the lurking leeches of lawyers within the healthcare system in the United States and countries all over the world. We wouldn't have to pay such high income taxes or insurance premiums like the ones I found on healthcare.gov that begin at $700 a month for just my wife and I. Thanks, Obama. Anyway, for anyone who is bothered watching this video in its entirety, please let me know any stories, organizations, places to volunteer or donate that address this problem within the healthcare system. And not just here in the United States, anywhere in the world. Look, I think we can really solve this problem. Actually, Scully, these problems aren't that difficult to solve when you expose all the bullshit interests and middlemen behind the scenes. And I think that's the first step in dealing with the clearly criminally overpriced healthcare system in the United States. I think the second step would be tort reform. But let's begin one step at a time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking on my face. And if you want to support this channel, click on the Patreon logo or donate via paypal.me slash homegrown.